Biology is technology. If you walk out with any view in this room from my talk, is that biology, again, is technology. 6,000 years ago, in the pyramids in Egypt, we perfected communicating with clay tablets. It was their pinnacle. This was a substrate for computation and communication. 60 years ago, on this continent, Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press. The printing press, for the first time in human history, democratized knowledge. That had a profound cultural consequence. It means knowledge was not held in the hands of the few. We could transport information from one side of the world to the other side of the world with the printing press. 60 years ago, in Silicon Valley, Federico Fagin and his team invented the transistor, the Intel 4004 chip. With 2,800 transistors, to you having a powerful computer in your pocket, in an iPhone, that doesn't mean much. You have more computational power in your pocket than the Apollo rocket did. But I assure you, 60 years ago, 2,800 transistors on a chip was a big deal. In 2008, we had another massive shift. Recently, Sun showed that it could have 10 billion transistors on a chip. However, if there's something we've noticed, our ability to pack more and more transistors in a chip is becoming limited. You can see that from the performance metrics. So essentially, the physics now limits us. How many devices can we pack in a device? That is the so-called Moore's law. The fundamental physics preventing us from packing more devices into computers. What does this mean for you? Well, your quality of life, for instance, that will be affected. What are we going to do about this? How are we going to power the next 50 years? From autonomous vehicles, being able to connect everybody on the planet, advanced medicine, or robotics? We cannot continue the way we are. If we do, we're going to need resources from at least four Earths to maintain our standard of living. Not to mention how many people are being pulled out of poverty. The data deluge coming is massive. Now, everybody's aware of this. So, we have different means to solve this problem. Do you want to go with neuromorphic computing like IBM is doing? Qualcomm Snapdragon, for instance, or even quantum computing. All of these attempts are at maintaining that balance between quality of life and consumption, and it affects you. And you know the coolest thing about all of this? The solution lies literally in your heads. In this room, we have more than 1,000 supercomputers. It's in your head. Your brain is the most powerful computer ever built. It's capable of more than 40 petaflops of processing power. The entire ability of your brain to hold information exceeds the entire Library of Congress catalog. And it does all of this processing in real time without lag, with just 10 watts of energy. It is true. Sometimes it doesn't seem that way, but it is true. Now, imagine 
if we could take all that power, pack it onto a device, that would be amazing. The value proposition from this would far outstrip anything our species has ever seen. To illustrate, this bee behind me has a sensitivity of thousands of a, thousands of a part per trillion in being able to sense a chemical several kilometers away. And it does this with the processing power that is not even up to the size of your thumb. There is no computer on this planet that can do that. None. Now, how does it do this? Inside the brain or the antenna of this bee is what you call an odorant receptor. This odorant receptor is like a little machine vibrating in space and time. It comes across an odorant. This odorant receptor lives on the surface of a neuron, a brain cell. Once it comes across this odorant, the brain cell fires what you call a spike. You can pick up this spike, and you know that the chemical is there. What if you can hijack this and put it on devices? That's what we set out to do. Take the processing power of a bee, put it on a drone. That form factor alone opens up new markets, new applications. And most importantly, it does so in a parsimonious way, in a simple way, and an energy efficient way. Which means you don't have to sacrifice computation at the altar of consuming so, many, so much energy. So, we put this to test. You see a drone? This drone is being powered by live biological neurons. It has a sweep stage, a six stage, and it's able to go to a chemical target using biological neurons. Now, what else can you do with this, apart from being able to detect materials? The dragonfly, with just 16 neurons, 16 neurons, achieves more feet of, of flight than any plane ever built by man. If you combine these two technologies together, you can do sensing on one side, you can do control on the other end, and that leads to computation, context-aware computation on devices done with hardware that is no more, the, no more than the size of your thumb. The future of robotics is going to depend on this because it's a particular application that requires a small area, minimal consumption, and cognition. So if you think you've seen any data deluge today, wait until 10 years' time. How are we going to power that for everybody, not for a selected few? Biology as technology is the answer to that. Scientists are not stopping at this. With a single DNA strand, you can store several, several gigabytes of data. You can sequence the DNA, encode information into it, and the best part, you can store it for thousands of years. In comparison to current systems, which you have to change every five years, that is parsimonious consumption that will last for thousands of years. This is not science fiction. Judge Church at Harvard has already done this. Also, building with biology. In San Francisco today, people can build houses with mushrooms. 
That tells you not to smoke in those houses. <laughs> After you're done with the house, it decomposes on its own. There is no greater urgency than for us to start building with biology. But we feel that the barrier to this is that we don't see biology as technology. To see that, every time you see a biological system, imagine solving that same problem with machines. Then you will realize how powerful biology is. I want you all to walk out of here with this mindset. Efficient, powerful technology without waste. Because I am fundamentally optimistic about our future. That we do not have to sacrifice technological progress for the sake of the environment or for consumption. It is possible to do sensible consumption. And biology, being technology, is a core part of that. And that is where I feel you can help. To support this effort that more companies or more people begin to build with biology from the scratch. Thank you.